We lived on 13th Street Southeast, which is 13 blocks from the Capitol in an easterly direction. Our streets were dirt. Nobody had any cars. Very few bicycles. Some of the boys, when they got to be about 10 or 12, were given bicycles. No girls. Girls couldn't have bicycles. But then we had, on our block, we had rows of houses. And we lived, there was a grocery store on the corner, Specter's grocery store. And then there was a vacant lot. Mm -hmm. And then there were, there was our row of houses that were red brick. And they had porches on the front of them. And small yards in the front that, goodness, they could have been, what, maybe 10 feet by 6 feet. Mm -hmm. Very tiny yards. Very small. With, um, iron fences around them that separated each yard up the street. And in our group of houses, there were one, two, three, eight houses. For a block? No, no, this was just where we were. We were in the center of the block, sort of. So how many houses were in the block? Well, I don't know how many could have originally gotten in a block. But that's all there was when I, when I was growing up. Then there was a vacant lot. Then there was another row of houses, red brick. They had no porches. They were flat front. They had uh, white cement stoop steps. And there were one, two, three, four, five of those. D Street was up where Spectre's store was. C Street was down at the end of the block. Across the street was Pekofsky's grocery store. Mm -hmm. And across the street from Spectre's grocery store was a saloon. Mm -hmm. This was before Prohibition, of course. And sometimes those people would get drunk and they'd make it over as far as our fence. And since we were the first fence, they came to and they'd hang on my fence and my father would have to go out and make them move away from them. Well, they, they were early drunk, huh? <laughs> then down, that was D Street then, they were where the, the saloon and the Spectre store was. Then you went down from the saloon and halfway down, there was a vacant lot across halfway. Then halfway down, was the brewery, and I don't remember the name of the brewery, but they had huge big horses pulling these big wagons, mm -hmm. and there usually were two horses to a wagon, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and they'd come down, usually they came down 13th Street past our house, and then went down D Street. So, several times, these big horses, they'd be so tired, and I guess they worked them awfully hard because they'd start out a fairly good time in the morning, and it was about five when they stopped in the evening. And the horses just, I guess they worked them too hard, and they just drop over dead on the street. Hmm. We had three of them dropped over dead on the street, and we kids would run because we knew the wagon would come to pick them up, and we called it the dead wagon. I don't know what the name of the thing was it was called, but it was a huge big wagon that was only about eight inches up off of the dirt street. And it had a, a the back of it went up. Mm -hmm. it, they were about, oh, they had to be about eight feet up the board and all the way around. But the back of it let down and made a ramp. And so the men, the two men that were in the wagon driving that one with the two horses pulling it, 
we get out and grab the horse's tail and pull it up into the wagon and close the back of it up and take the horse to the dead horse place, wherever that was. I never did know. But anyhow, and uh, then Prohibition came. Well, first, I better tell you, we had uh, there at the vacant lot at the corner of D and 13. At that time, they had um, a rental stable, and they kept horses and wagons there. Mm -hmm. And my father used to go over every once in a while, and we'd get all dressed up, and he'd go over and rent a horse and wagon, and we'd go for a ride. Mm -hmm. He'd take us for a ride, and you rented them by the hour. So that an hour would give us time enough to go out. To Pennsylvania Avenue, go down Pennsylvania Avenue to the bridge that went across it in the Anacostia. Mm -hmm. And the Potomac, a branch of the Potomac River came up there that separated our part of Washington from what became the other part of Washington mm -hmm. in Southeast. And, uh, and it was just woods over there, and there was a train track then went up to a little town called Bennings. I don't think there were more than maybe 25, 30 people in the whole town. The train went there. And uh, so we'd go for a ride over the bridge, and then my father would turn around, we'd come back and turn in the horse and wagon. So then there were a whole group of kids on our street. And kids used to come from blocks away to play on our street because we always had such a good time. At the time, we had gas lights to light the streets. And the lamplighter used to come around on a pole, pretty good size, long pole, and they had a little hook on the top of it. And he'd just come along with that and hook it up into the hook there and pull the thing, and that would light the lights mm -hmm. for the night. And they were gas lights with, had, you know, they have, um, what they call them? Those round? Wick? No, they're, um, mantles. They call them mantles. Yeah. Inside. Every once in a while they'd have to come around and fix them. Sometimes the men would be a little late coming around, and we kids would want to play out there. So one of us would climb up on the lamppost and pull the thing and turn it off. So we had the light on. And that's, we always used the lamp. We had one in front of our house, and we always used that one to play. Uh, run, sheep, run. And uh, games in the evening. They were always hiding games. By that time, uh, we had had our dinner. Everybody ate dinner no later than 5 o'clock. The men usually got home before 5, and they'd eat 5, 5.30, and then we'd be out to play about 6 o'clock. It would still be late in the summer, but in the wintertime, it would be dark. But anyhow, and then every, all the kids used to come there. On our street, we had, whew, what did we have? One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven kids on our side of the street. They were all within three years of each other. And the other side of the street had one, two, three. Three on the other side. So we would play out in front in the evening. So, and the parents would all come out and sit on the porches and watch us play. Then between our group of houses and the next group up the street from us, uh, towards C Street, there was the vacant lot that had at one time been a marble cutter, and he had cut tombstones for the cemetery, for Congressional Cemetery, which is at 17th Street, and we were on 13th. And incidentally, we used to go out to, <laughs> being kids, we'd go out to the cemetery 
and go around to see what graves that just were new and had flowers on them, and then we'd pick up the flowers and bring them home. And, but anyhow, and nobody ever caught us at it or ever stopped us. So um, apparently it was all right, they didn't care. But uh, anyhow, the, the kids would just come from all around the area and play on our street. We played a game called Run Sheep Run. And you took two sides. Mm -hmm. And the one side. Oh, did you take two sides on that game? No. No. What we did was. No, there was one person that was it. And then there was one person that went, the rest of us would all go hide somewhere. Then that person would go back to the lamppost and get the person who was in and tell them, all right, they could come and hunt for us. Mm -hmm. Then they had to go and hunt for us. And we'd hide anywhere within two blocks of the place. <laughs> we just went anywhere. But we all had to stay in one place. And uh, so then they'd go around. And if they got far enough, one moves in, if they got far enough away that we could run in, all of us could get into the base there, to the lamppost, before the person who was hunting for us could get there. Then the man with that person, the person with that person, the kid, would say, run, sheep, run. And we'd all start running, try to get back. And then, of course, the fellow who was in, or the girl who was in, would run too, and we'd try to always get in there. If somebody didn't get in there, then they had to be it the next time. Then out they went again. And we went, we had uh, our whole block, and we had a back alley in back of it, with an entrance on the D Street, but not on the C Street. You had to come in off of D Street, <laughs> and then you had to go to the right to get up to 13th Street, we went to the left, we got to 12th Street. And so we could use all the places back in there, the backyards and everything. We played it, even in the basements of some of the houses, would let us come in and play. So that was one game we played in the summertime. And then we had, uh, We had a game we called Steps, and one person was it for that. And, well, we called it Steps or May I. <laughs> Either one, sometimes it was called Steps, sometimes May I. Because we'd all stand in a line, and then the person who was it would say, pick you out and say, like, Lois, you can take two steps. That meant that you could walk two of these little bricks that made the brick sidewalk. You could walk two side, two of those bricks up. And, but you had to say, may I? If you didn't say, may I, then you had to be it. And that person went back to play the game. Lord, I haven't thought of that for years. Oh. That used to be a fun game. Then, uh, oh, I guess, I guess I was 10 years old. I had just gotten my first pair of skates when they decided they were going to cement the street or make a cement street. Mm -hmm. So this would have been about 1919? Uh-huh. Right after the war? Yeah. So they made a cement street out there. Then we really had a good time. When, they, when the city would cement the street, before they opened it to the public, the police always came one evening, blocked the street off, and let people go roller skating on the street. And grown-ups and children, everybody went out roller skating. And so, you know, it was just we a fun thing to do. And of course, there were Nearly every summer they were cementing one street in the area, you know. So we'd have some place to go for one night in the year that we'd go and roller skate. 
then we used to, of course, there was so little traffic, nobody had cars. And, uh, well, now a couple people did because right across the street from us was Miss Annie Rudy. And Miss Rudy, she was Mrs. Rudy, but we always called her Miss Annie. Miss Annie was a dressmaker. And she was a dressmaker for the elite in Washington. Oh, she never even used patterns. She cut everything out herself. Mm. She was very good at it. And so Miss Annie, I don't know what I was going to tell you about her. Car. Yeah. The cars used to come. The chauffeured cars. Bringing these people up, you know. They even came up and down Virginia. And uh, she'd make the dresses. And usually when she'd get a new dress in the make, she'd call me, she'd say, Lois, want to see what I've got now? And then I'd go over and she'd show me the material and then show me how she was going to make it. And that was always nice. Miss Annie taught me how to dance, too. When I was in high school, she said she thought it was time I learned to dance. My family disapproved of dancing. But Miss Annie taught me. And... Uh, she was a good dancer. And so anyhow, then she married and she had a little girl. And, uh, but she always was just kind of, people always liked Miss Annie. She was friendly and nice. And her little girl was nice. Her husband was in the Navy. He was never home. And, uh, but anyhow, at, uh, these cars, were the only ones that ever came, and they came in the daytime, of course, to see Miss Annie. So we had the streets to play in at night, and we could roller skate. We did, with chalk, we'd make um, what did we make it? We jumped. We made squares. Huh? Yeah, hopscotch. And, uh, We'd draw, we could draw real big ones out there on the streets you now. We'd make houses. We girls would make houses and we'd draw. Sometimes it was just dirt was all we could use. We didn't have anything, but we tried to find something we could use you now. And we'd draw the houses, different rooms in the houses. Sometimes they'd be there a whole week before they'd be gone, you know. And. Uh, We'd play and we'd take our lunch out there and sit and eat in the dining room and come time for a nap and we'd lie down and take our naps and all out the street so you know there was no traffic. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was fun. And then the lot that had been the, that had the stone, the stone cutters, when they moved or left there and went out of business or whatever, that happened while I was, either while I was little or before we ever moved there, because I never remember seeing them. But they left their stones. We had these huge, big stones like this. Some of them were big, some of them were smaller, and they were all shapes, and they were not even. And that's where we go and play, ta um, play follow the leader. And the boys always want to be follow the leader, and they make us girls go. And sometimes they'd be so far apart from each other, we couldn't jump. And we girls would fall, and they thought that was the funniest thing they ever saw. We'd fall all over the place. And we always had skin knees, you know, from falling against all those stones. Oh. But anyhow, and then in the lot by our house, it was just a flat lot. And dirt. And that's where we played baseball. And the boys and girls, we'd get up there and play baseball. Mm -hmm. Then we played a game called Babe in the Hat. The boys always wore caps in those days. I don't know why they always wore but they always had caps on. Girls didn't wear hats. Unless we were going somewhere. If we were going downtown or going to church, we wore hats. But the boys always wore caps. So then, and the boys were always the ones to instigate this, because they were always good at it. But along the side of our fence, they would lay these caps down. And we girls would have to get a carton or, I mean, a little box or something to lay down. And they had a regular hard baseball. So 
so Babe and the Hat was, one person was in. And they'd walk up and down the hat. All of a sudden, they dropped the baseball into a hat. Then everybody else ran, and the person whose hat it was ran over to get the ball out. The minute he picked it up, you had to stop running wherever you were. So, and then he threw the baseball at you, tried to hit you. And if he hit you, if he hit you, they made, they made you go and stand up against my the brick wall with your back to them and everybody playing took a chance of throwing the ball and hitting you. <laughs> it's a wonder we all didn't have broken back. And none of us did. Oh, those boys used to throw that thing hard. Woo! But anyhow, then, uh, let's see. Um, next door to where you rented the horse and buggies. It went almost down to E Street. They had that whole thing there. Uh, that's where my father used to go when he wanted to go fishing in the Potomac River. He and I'd go over there and hunt for worms in the manure piles <laughs> and the straw. <laughs> and we'd get worms and we'd go down the bridge and my father would fish. And, uh, and then next to that was Miss Keene. She had a um, clothing store for women and girls. So you rarely ever went downtown. You went to Miss Keene and bought if you were girls. The next block down was a man, Mr. Paulus, and he had boys' clothes. <laughs> So the boys, the people put them down there. We rarely went downtown. You had to go on the streetcar, cost the nickel to go down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we rarely went downtown. We'd buy the things there at their places. Then right around the corner from Miss Keene's was Buchanan School. So that's where all those kids in our neighborhood went to Buchanan School there. And. Uh, Miss McCausland was the teacher, everybody scared, I mean, was the principal, everybody scared to death of her. And she was the nicest woman. <laughs> but we were all scared, she was strict. Oh. And, uh, but anyhow, then um, when you got to the seventh grade, the boys had to go to carpenter shop. The girls had to go to sewing class. There was no place in the school to have it. And we had to walk down to 7th Street. And we were at 13th. We had to walk to 7th Street to go to a school called B.B. French. How it got, I don't know, I guess it was capital B, capital B French, named for somebody, whoever it was, I don't know. And there was nothing in there except a few rooms, and that's where they taught the woodworking to the boys, and they had um, a room where the girls went to learn sewing. Then when you got to eighth grade, you had to go down there and take cooking. And the boys just went to the carpenter shop for the two years. So that was grade school. Then the high school, when you went to high school, you could pick the school you wanted to go to. When you were in grade school, you had to go in the neighborhood, the nearest school. But uh, when you went to high school, you could pick where you wanted to go. And I took Eastern, it was closer and I could walk to it. The other schools, you had to get on the streetcar and ride. So, and all of my friends went to Eastern. And that was out by the Potomac River, down 17th Street. But it was at, at uh, East Capitol on 17th. And East Capitol Street, we were at D, and you had to go to C, B, A, and then East Capitol. 
And so, oh, excuse me, and we went, we'd go there, we'd walk up. There was a shortcut kind that we could go around the back way. You could cut across the thing a lot. Mm -hmm. And we used to usually do that unless it was bad weather. Then you couldn't go across the thing a lot because it was all mud mm -hmm. and snow in the wintertime. So we didn't go across it. But, uh, and on East Capitol Street is where, when Barton Bailey Circus came to town, they always had their circus parade. And there was always a circus parade the day after they got to town. Mm -hmm. And they had the wild animals, you know, lions and tigers and stuff, all in these horse-drawn carriages, whatever they call them. And uh, whatever. And uh, the clowns would be there, and trapeze people. They even have trapeze things set up on a flatbed truck. Uh, mm -hmm. Not a truck, but something with the full of the, the horses. And uh, they go from, they start at, at 13th Street. And at 13th Street, when you got up East Capitol Street, was Lincoln Park. That was named for Abraham Lincoln. I had a big statue of Abraham Lincoln in the park. And that's where we kids used to go and play a lot. In nice weather, we'd walk up to Lincoln Park. And it, it went from 12th Street to 13th Street. And it went from B Street, no, A Street on the southeast side to A Street on the northeast side. So it was a pretty good sized park. Mm -hmm. And it had cement walks in it so we could roller skate in there. And it had a baseball, little baseball park the kids could play in. Had swings, had seesaws. And then it had benches and things where the parents could sit down if they took little children. Well, from that park, out to 17th Street to where our high school was, was where the parade went. But always when the circus came to town, the tents were put up down across from Union Station. And that was down, that was northeast, and let me see, There was East Capitol Street, and then the two blocks down from East Capitol Street was Union Station. So it was just one block down where there was a big vacant lot. And that's where they used to have the circus, always came there. And then at, at the end of the regular circus, the Barn Bailey Circus, you could pay extra and get to see the Wild West show. So I got to see Buffalo Bill Cody. In fact, I met him because friends of ours who lived at the corner, we were at um, 13th and D, and they lived at 12th and D, the gates. Mm -hmm. And their little girl and boy, the gates knew Buffalo Bill from out in Omaha, I mean out in Nebraska. And um, so every time he'd come to town, he'd come to visit the gates. So then the kids would say, Buffalo Bill's coming to town. All the kids in the neighborhood would go rushing down there to see Buffalo Bill. And he'd stop and talk to us, you know. And he was dressed in the cowboy outfit, you know, and his long hair and a hat. And stuff. So that was fun. And he always had, he usually had in the Wild West show, it was his Wild West show that followed the circus in the same tent, everything. And he had Annie Oakley. Boy, you should have seen her shoot that gun. She could hit that target every darn time. She'd be standing on a horse, she'd be sitting on a horse, she'd be sitting backwards on a horse. She, and going full tilt. And she'd shoot that gun and hit that target. She really was good. And uh, then he had an Indian chief. And 
and I can't remember his name, that was with him. And he had some other Indians, and they do like Indian dance, you know. But they used to come every spring. Barnum Bailey would come, and then he'd be there at the same time, Buffalo Bill. So that was fun. And then when I went to high school, uh, it was a fairly new, it only been built a couple of years. And they'd had a very, very tiny school before over at 7th and Pennsylvania Avenue. So they built this one. But there wasn't much money, of course, in the schools. So we took bi I took biology. Well, they couldn't afford to buy the specimen to use, you know, worms and snails and things. So what they used to do was, you went to biology class, and then he'd say, well, we're going to dissect worms today. So he'd say, come on. So the whole class would walk. He'd take every class <laughs> individually. We'd walk, and there was a vacant lot that went from the end of the school there down the Potomac River. So this great big lot had all kinds of stuff in it. Turtles and, and I don't know whether there were any snakes or not. I never saw any if there were. And bookworms and caterpillars 